Hey, welcome to our episode of Chad's Beer Reviews featuring Anthony from Life is Brutiful. What's going on, man? Not much. Glad to be here. This is uh, exciting. You're out there in uh, Arizona? Yeah, I'm in Arizona now. I just uh, just moved from Germany, so uh, oh. just getting used to the American beer scene again. Okay. Well, when we live, like I'm in Florida, you're in Arizona, it's hard mm. to find beers that we can both get. So absolutely, we went, we went with something basic, but pretty ubiquitous. Mm. This is good old Yingling traditional Classic. lager, mm. original amber beer. Now it does say Pottsville, Pennsylvania. That's where their original brewery is, but they actually have a satellite brewery in Tampa. Oh, wow. Really? And, uh, I got the big 24 ounce can. All right, so I poured it into my mug, which I haven't used since like last summer, and it's definitely like an amber lager, but I get like a huge foam on that. I have to wait a few minutes for it to to settle down. Hmm. But yeah, that is a pretty. Uh, my I would probably call it like, I might have goes so far as to call that brilliant clarity, but yeah, I mean, when you think amber, this is the yeah, color. yeah, this absolutely. is the color you should think of. Yeah, it's got that same type of uh, like amber color that you like the old Jurassic Park movies, like the mosquito in it. You know, it's like yeah, it's like the purest form of amber possible. Yeah, almost uh, but slightly coppery too. Mm -hmm. let's, yeah, let's I was hoping my yeah yeah. <laughs> I will say for a lager, it actually has a actual legit smell to it. You know, it's like yeah, slightly. You definitely toasty or caramelly mm -hmm. you definitely get a good amount of that like subtle subtle toasty malt that uh you expect out of like an american amber style beer whether it's ale and or lager um i i was surprised because it has been such a long time since i've had a green bottle i was expecting a bit of a, a you know a slight skunk maybe a little light struck in there Mm. surprisingly uh, i'm not getting that at all so i mean whatever it is That's... they're doing it's working pretty so well. i know this is an adjunct lager do you get like maize or corn or anything mm. uh as far as it comes to most adjuncts um i i don't usually perceive them on my nose very well i i just my threshold isn't there uh really it's so i'm getting a ton of that malt i'm not getting much hops i'm not getting that skunk like i was expecting it's really just kind of uh subtly roasty and maybe maybe a little soapy in the background but that's kind of about the extent mm. of all i'm getting on the aroma i wouldn't say soapy but i would say it definitely has like a kind of coarse light or something like like just that general macro lager essence mm -hmm. to it you know yeah i can see that for sure yeah. all right well we've been going way too long here let's let's dive in <sighs> yep. cheers, cheers. <laughs> Mm. Mm. absolute classic i love it i know i think i have mine at the perfect temperature right now because like <laughs> it's been sitting out for a few minutes and like usually this kind of beer you want to drink like pretty much at fridge temp sure but it has warmed up a few degrees mm. and i can actually to me it actually has taste to it like it's not just ice cold beer you're using to just suck down you know <laughs> yeah i mean i've always been a fan of uh yingling as like my go-to because it, it has just enough flavor to be uh, intriguing but not so much that like it can't be like your everyday go-to you know you, you don't have to think about it too hard and i i, I think the malt character in that my taste is pretty good you know just a hint of biscuit predominantly cracker good balance between sweetness and you know uh dry is not the right word but it uh is well balanced i'll say that yeah i think like the inspiration for like these because this is technically what the bjcp would call international amber lager mm. it's kind of like they start out as like a oktoberfest like madsen martsen mm -hmm. however they pronounce it yeah. Um, and then if you just if you threw some flake maize in there, and I'm sure just use a lot of water or a lot mm -hmm. less, a lot less uh, grain than they would use in an actual Oktoberfest, because it does yep. have that, as the, as we would say, the elegant malt character to it. Well, mm -hmm. it's not quite so elegant. It's um, it it's there. It's like it's it's like elegant, like that's been photocopied <laughs> a few times. You know, it's like a copy of a copy of a copy. 
I, I don't know. I like it. Yeah, I, I think it has a. I I would personally use the word elegance in it because it's it's consistent and it, it's refined. You know, it, it's been the same for so long that you know you would know a bad one. So I I, I think it does have like. <sighs> an elegance but maybe not a sophistication to it you know what i mean like it's yeah it, it's it's what i want from it and you're 100 right on that the the historical uh derivative of the marts and uh i i was doing some research into this and it, it, it all seems like it all started with the oktoberfest marts and vienna lager and it just kind of rampaged through america you know as the amber lager and you know the, the adjuncts and everything changed it up so yeah it, it i would say it, it, yingling is nice because it still holds a little bit of that that historical essence in its sensory characteristics yeah and i do get i get like a little tiny little bit of like caramel on here i mean i wouldn't go as far as to say this beer is sweet it's just kind of like yeah the flavor of caramel again i mean mm -hmm. if you ever had a, a oktoberfest martzen yeah. um like those kind of flavors, but like, you know, mm -hmm. like if Wine Schiffon or Paul Honor's up here, like this is, you know, kind of down here as far <laughs> as the intensity of flavors. Sure, sure. And I will say for a macro lager, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of these you tend to get like acetaldehyde or uh, DMS or, you know, diacetyl or something in there. I, like yep. this is a really yep. clean fermentation. I'm not Absolutely. getting any of that on here. Mm -hmm. All right. There is a reason why it is, you know, America's oldest brewery. <laughs> you know, they, I think they know what they're doing. You know, they they, they put out a, a quality product, whether it's, you know, it, it might not be exceptionally exciting, but it's definitely, it's going to be what you want out of it. It's what they advertise it as, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, this, it has like, I get like a little bit of like, probably like a noble hop. It like right on the finish, um, just like a tiny little speck of bitterness. I, I think this is like, I don't know, I think it's like 15 IBU, something like that. It's, mm. you know, it's not super bitter. It's just enough for, for balance. Yeah. I'm, um, uh, I'm surprisingly not getting much hop at all. I, for some reason in my mind, I remembered it having a slightly sharper kind of the way you were explaining it, but. I don't know. Maybe mm -hmm. my taste buds are off today, but I, I'm just I'm I'm getting the sweetness 100 as you mentioned, but uh, I, yeah, I'm just not finding the hop today. Well, you know what it is. If it's an old bottle, I mean, hops tend to drop in like that's true. Yeah, as beers age, they tend to get like sweeter. Mm -hmm. The hops fade away. Yeah. Um, I'm not getting any just, like oxidized characters out of it, so yeah. I, I, it can't be like too old. But yeah, you're probably right. There probably is a little die off in there. How would you describe the body and the co2 and all that so uh <laughs> carbonation is incredibly pleasant you know uh, is good stimulation on the tongue not nothing too aggressive or assertive that it would be distracting but it's what i want out of your thinner bodied lagers um I, I, like i was dancing around the word dry earlier I, I do have kind of a drier finish in this but um it, it's definitely it, I gotta hate using the word. It's crushable, you know. It's sessionable. It's what you want out of, you know, a standard day-to-day go-to logger. I'm trying to look up the ABV on this. I thought it would. Does it say on your bottle? Mm. I just looked it up on Untapped. Says four point five twelve IBUs. I could see that. I would say, you know, mm. actually for a logger and especially for a macro logger, this actually has a bit of body to it. I'd probably put it like medium light not straight up light mm -hmm. and carbonation is probably about moderate not like champagne effervescence or like uh we just my girlfriend and i just did berliner weiss last night and that thing oh, is yeah. like super oh, spastic yeah. like a mm -hmm. like a Lacroix or a bubbly or something like that yeah that was the burlo right yeah yeah that one is that one's crazy but yeah this is really smooth um but it's it's definitely a little heavier in the mouth than a Bud Miller or Coors, mm -hmm. yeah. regular or light. But it's also smooth and, I mean, it does have that kind of lager macro aftertaste. Like it's a, some people describe it as like tinny. I think it's just, it's, I think it's just the corn, the maize. Yeah. Um, uh, 
that, that soapy character I was mentioning that that's the predominant aftertaste, you know, that, and just a little bit of that caramel sweetness, but you're right. It's incredibly smooth. It's incredibly easy drinking, which is why I, like I said, I love this as like a day to day go-to drinking beer because mm -hmm. it's not too complex. It's, it goes down smooth, you know, <laughs> by soapy, do you mean like coriander or no? So I, <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm a huge cilantro boy. I'll eat it by, you know, just by the handful. But this one, I, maybe that is like a precursor or an onset of possible oxidation. It's not quite like sherry or cardboard, but mm -hmm. it just has like a faint, like if you got a little dial on the tip of your tongue, you know what I mean? A little dial soap. So uh, it's nothing too in my face, but I, I, if I had to blame it on anything, cause I don't usually get that in a Yingling, I would say it probably was because of it, it is an older bottle. I mean, if I was judging this as spec, I think like this is at least a 40 out of 50. I mean, maybe, maybe even higher personal mm -hmm. preference. Like this can I'm holding in my hand right now. This is, this is good. I'm. I think like like on my own personal like on a one to ten scale, this is seven, maybe seven and a half, kind of like you know B yeah. kind of range. Maybe yeah. maybe B plus. I uh, I, I okay. So I, I've said multiple times this is like this is a typical go to daily drinker for me. So uh, I would put it, you know, I would say about sixty. Uh, out of 100 is like a, a perfect uh, representation for it for me because it's well, that's good like enough. an F, it's though what <laughs> 60 out of 100 that's a d that's, that's a, okay all right i mean on a school grade not, sure okay all right well all right, let's then let's go with like a 70 then since that would be c c's average c's passing mm -hmm. <laughs> i i don't usually do numerical numbers so this is a new concept for me but um yeah. Let's say if C is average, 70, I, 70 is fine with me then. Yeah. Because it's something I would have no problems drinking in at any time out in public at a game or something like you mentioned. Or sitting at home, you know, on the couch watching TV, you know, something I can turn my mind off but not be uh, find offensive or, you know, anything like that. All right. So we're going pretty long. So check out my podcast with Anthony. Uh, which I'm sure is linked down there somewhere. So uh, thanks to Anthony for joining and uh, check out the podcast. And I guess that's it. Cheers. <laughs> cheers. Prost, as they say in Germany. Yep. Prost. Prost. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Cheers. Bye. Hey, welcome to episode of Chad's Beer Reviews featuring Aaron from Life is Brutiful. What's going on, man? Oh, wait. Hold on one second. All right. Anthony. <laughs> I thought it was Aaron. No, nah, no, nah, Anthony. <laughs> all right, I'll start over. No, yeah, it's all good. It's all good. All good. Somebody brewed it. Chad just reviewed it. Thanks for watching Chad's beer review. Trust me, the next episode will be a lot better.